Good morning, everyone. We have another great show planned for you this Thursday morning. Montgomery County, Maryland Council Member at Large Will Jawando joins us to discuss Tom Perez's run for governor in the state. And Kim Iverson breaks down some of the latest Supreme Court rulings. The Intercept's Ken Klippenstein is also with us. But first, Vice President Kamala Harris is set to visit the U.S.-Mexico border. Harris, who was tasked by President Biden to lead diplomatic efforts at the border, will also visit El Paso, Texas on Friday. The announcement came shortly after former President Trump announced he will visit the border next week. Reporters pressed White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki on the timing of the vice president's visit. Let's watch. Uh, so about today's announcement, why is the vice president visiting the border this week when earlier this month she dismissed a trip like that, saying it would be a grand gesture? She also said um, in an interview with NBC that she would be open to going to the border if it was an appropriate time. She said that after she said that. So that's important context as okay. well. And if you look just to a couple of months ago when 6,000 children were in border patrol facilities, we're now at the point where there's far less than 1,000. If you look to just a couple of months ago when there were children who were waiting in border patrol facilities for more than 100 hours and they were certainly overcrowded, uh, now it's less than 30 hours. In April, there were 22,000 kids in HHS facilities and now that number is 14,000. Is there still more work to do? Absolutely. That's the purview of Secretary Mayorkas, but it's important every component of our government is coordinated. Was it important for the White House to have her seen at the border before former President Trump has a trip there next week? Uh, we made an assessment uh, within our government about when it was an appropriate time for her to go to the border. I wonder why she's going. What what could possibly be the reason? No, there's no <laughs> politics here involved at all, and the culture war spins around and yeah. around without actual solution. Um, you know, I'm not all that surprised, and I'm glad she's going, actually. I mean, President Trump started his 2016 campaign by attacking immigrants and, and migrants who move across the border in search of a better life. He's doing it again. I, maybe it's a preface to a run. It's certainly, you know, fanning the flames of the culture war that exists. And one of the primary concerns, if you look at polls that Republicans have, which always kind of boggles my mind because I always ask Republicans, well, when's the last time an undocumented person did anything but help you with something in your mm -hmm. life? And normally they can never answer that. Mm -hmm. It's also pretty funny that the people who are in Iowa nowhere near the border and, and states that are not close to the border are the ones most concerned about migrants, which they don't actually interact with on a regular basis. So uh, I'm glad she's going. Hopefully we can continue to make improvements that, Jen, you know, like Jen Psaki said. But, you know, the culture war portion of this, I think, I think is, is pretty damning and, and, and a little bit sad. Well, it is, but I mean, conservatives very freaked out about immigrants, I think, in a, in a you know, to a degree that is hysterical and, and wrong. I want more immigration. I don't, you know, I want them to be able to come here legally, safer, et cetera. Uh, but the, the, the media, the left, liberals, Democrats were holding the Trump administration accountable for its abusive uh, immigration detention practices. Mm -hmm. And that's still going on to some degree. She was, she was, Saki was conceding it's still going on. Mm -hmm. And you feel like it gets less attention. Now it gets attention from the right because they want to, you know, scream hypocrisy, mm -hmm. which is valid, although it was worse under them. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, it doesn't get as much attention because no, there, it, there's no partisan, it's the, because of the partisanship. You're right. And you bring up a good point, right? Anywhere there are human, you know, human rights abuses taking place and people are living in, in difficult conditions at, the cause of the U.S. government or any of the programs that we have presently running, we should be addressing that, we should be approving that. I'm glad that they are making improvements, right? The border is a large place. The way that people enter this country, you know, there's a long, long border there for them to protect and be able to deal with, especially since the numbers have increased, we know that. Um, but it's only been about, what, six months? You know, right. since Prince President Biden and, and you know, um, Mayorkas has had the opportunity to actually make improvements here. Jen Psaki stated a lot of improvements there, numerically speaking, and I think that's a good thing. Obviously, still room for lots of improvement. You know, we shouldn't be keeping kids in, in detention centers in, in conditions that are deplorable. And, uh, and, you know, we need to make improvements, but, but I'm glad that they're moving in the right direction, especially as someone who's paid a lot of attention to this issue over the years uh, and has really fought for migrants' rights over the years. But you bring up an important point. Let's stop playing politics. Yeah. Let's pass comprehensive immigration reform. We almost got it, almost got it done before. The House yeah. killed it. Let's go back there. Let's give a pathway to citizenship for people. Let's amend our immigration system so that it actually functions not on a 1940s and 50s model, but, but in accordance with today and what the United States needs. And, uh, and move along from this problem, finally. Right. Yeah. Make it easier for people to come here so they don't you know, run through the desert at great risk to themselves. Absolutely. Uh, Kevin McCarthy took to Twitter to blast Kamala's trip to the border, saying, quote, Vice President Harris should have visited the border months ago. 
adding that the administration's open border policies have created this crisis. Trump released a statement that made some rounds on social media, saying that it's great Kamala is going to witness the destruction of the Biden administration's border policies, and if Governor Abbott and I weren't going there next week, she would have never gone which I think is probably accurate, as I said earlier. Uh, she should have gone. I don't know, I, I don't know why she didn't. I, I also don't really know why she got saddled with this job anyway. Um, she didn't have some kind of expertise in this, in this background. I, the, the Biden administration chose Harris to be the point man on immigration. It almost felt like sticking her with like a very difficult job mm -hmm. that she's almost certainly going to fail at because it, this, is a, it, this is a tough problem to solve. Right, it, it's going to take comprehensive reform that's out of her power to do, um, which is weird because she's also supposed to be Biden's successor. And I don't think, and I don't mean this meanly, I don't think she is actually naturally... She doesn't have as many talents as Biden does for being well liked, um, and I don't think she's broadening her appeal and sticking her with this issue. Doesn't isn't really accomplishing that, in my opinion. I could yeah, be wrong, look, but that's my I, that's my reading of the situation. I think that's an interesting assessment. I think if I think if we are able to get a comprehensive immigration reform package passed, she becomes a heroine. Yeah, and and that's a good thing for her to take into the future, whether she runs for president or not. Um, I, I think, you know, look, she was the AG of California, so she does have an experience with border issues, certainly. Uh, but, y you know, I think the president needs to be able to help y to work with, with Republicans in, in the Senate, primarily, and in Congress to be able to cut a deal on, on immigration reform. And if he is the face of it, right, then it makes it a little bit difficult. If mm -hmm. she's the face of it right now, he can continue to, to work with the Senate and work on some kind of compromise so we can actually finally get this, this passed. So that's what my estimation is as to why she's leading it, right? And they've got to take it on. It's very clear the Republicans are making this their, one of their central issues for 2022 and 2024, that, oh no, you know, scary people from other countries are coming here. And, and just like Kevin McCarthy incorrectly stated, and he right. should stop doing this because this is a country that is built by immigrants and is still supported by immigrants and our tax right. base is increased by the fact that we have immigration you know he should stop calling them drug dealers and and people you know who are coming across the border to do crime because that's by and large not true and everybody knows that there's not a single study it's or piece of data that bears that out and the only thing it does is increase racial tensions in this country which quite frankly we have enough of right right now. so we, uh, oh so i agree with you we want more immigrants here uh for uh, to, to do jobs uh it's good for the economy uh, it's not true that there's like some way wave of crime unleashed by immigrants. There is a wave of crime, but it, it doesn't have anything naturally to do with immigrants. Sure. It's just a problem we're dealing with. Uh, the, the issue with all this illegal immigration is really the, 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 the issue, the, the, the lives of the immigrants themselves. Is they're, they're mm -hmm. coming through in these very unsafe conditions, and then we're crowding them into these facilities, and it's, you know, it's straining our resources. It's unsafe for them. So that's why we have to change the system so they can come here more easily, legally, and we don't have people crossing in such a manner. And uh, that, I mean, that's what we have to do. We know what we have to do, yeah, and just yeah. we have to get it done. I, could, I couldn't agree more. And, and to that fact, the BBC actually reports that the conditions of these migrant child camps at the border are heartbreaking and filled with disease and scarcity of food. One employee went on the record with the BBC to reveal sexual abuse many of these children are facing at the hands of U.S. Border Patrol members. DHS mentioned there was a rape. They're giving girls pregnancy tests. I also heard they just announced the results in front of everyone here. And I heard the other night that another contractor was caught in a boy's tent, you know, doing things with him. It's, it's unbelievable. There should not Disgusting. be these kind of abuses occurring at the border or anywhere for that matter. And, and they're taking advantage of a disadvantaged population that is awaiting hearings, that is awaiting placement, that is awaiting either entry or not to the United States. And, and they're captive and they're abusing them. Right. And, and, you know, whoever is responsible for these kind of behaviors should be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. I would argue it's fundamentally un-American to treat people who are trying to enter this country to pursue work and a better, a better you know, quality of life um, you know, in, in such a horrible way, especially when it comes to children. Man. I mean, like, this is something that just, you know, that is it really difficult for me to, to continually deal with. This is a government failure. This is the government abusing children or allowing them to be abused. These are, these are our people. This is our, ta this is our tax dollars at work. I mean, this is part of my limited government, shrink government agenda. A lot of the stuff government does is bad. You would agree is bad uh, when, it's, when it's abusive, when it's violent, when it's over-policing of people, when it's law enforcement. You know, at, at some point you say, is, is it better for these kids? Just, just let them go. Why do they have to be in these facilities anyway? I know they're trying to connect them with their families. But if keeping them here is abusive for them, if they're going under those things, why, why even do that?
Yeah. You know, I, it is an incredibly difficult kind of proposition. I know it's one that's you know really difficult to deal with. And and the chief of the U.S. Border Patrol, Rodney Scott, was forced out of his job this week. Scott told top agency officials during a call to discuss budgets and other issues that he had 60 days to decide whether to be reassigned or retire. Hmm. Yeah, I, I've, I've got a good idea. Why don't you retire? <laughs> Why don't you retire? You're responsible directly for these yeah. conditions. You're responsible for the targeting of immigrants and, and you know, under, under, you know, supported by kind of Trump's really, really, uh, you know, caustic policies toward, toward these migrants. Um, you know, really responsible, in my opinion, for some of these abuses. Get out, man. Get yeah, out. get him out. It's under your watch. And it's get very out. hard to get rid of incompetent people in the government. We all know this to be true. It's very hard to fire people. It has to be sometimes there has to be a whole investigation. These people have a lot of protections. Sometimes they have, sometimes it's union protections. Uh, <laughs> unions protect police officers too. <laughs> the, the left often forgets that bad police officers are protected by their unions. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad he's gone. Uh, what is going on is. Totally, totally unacceptable, morally unacceptable, it, and, and it's 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 also government waste and bloat, and it needs to needs to be done. Yeah, look, I think it's fundamentally un-American to treat migrants this way, and and next we'll tell you what's on our radars.